Good morning, Mount Jezero family and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our worship experience on this first Sunday. We are so glad that you chose to join us. We ask right now for those that are visiting with us, we welcome you. And then we ask that um, our friends and family, please share the worship experience via your social media platform. Let others experience this worship experience so that they can be blessed throughout this week. We thank God for your presence here and we know that you are going to be truly blessed. Let us pray. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For in the house of the Lord, there's healing, there's deliverance, and there is worship. So God, we come to you this morning saying thank you. We pray to Heavenly Father that as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, that you would hear from us and we would more so hear from you. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place, God. Even though we're virtual, God, we know, God, that you hear us and we know that um, you, we experience um, you because you're your presence is here. So we just thank you. We pray, God, for that soul that is searching. We pray, God, that they will realize that they need you in the pardon of their sins. We pray to Heavenly Father for Pastor as he brings forth the word. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Now, Lord, open up our inner ear so that we can hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, let all the saints of God say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the blood of Jesus this morning. For we know that the blood of Jesus saved our souls this morning. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make
We come to praise the great I am this morning. We come to give you honor, Father. You are amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and help us sing this simple worship song this morning. Hallelujah.
Good morning, Mount Jezreel. Let us prepare our hearts and mind to go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord God, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins, Lord, and creating in us a clean heart and a right spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross so that we would have life more abundantly, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that he saved us, Lord, and, and did not come to this world to condemn us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are standing in the need of prayer, Lord God. There are so many prayer requests that we have, Lord God. We are asking you to heal our bodies, Lord God. Be with the doctors as we prepare for surger surgical procedures, Lord God. Be with the doctors as they are prescribing medicines to help regulate our bodies, Lord God. But ultimately, Lord, we are praying for healing because we know by Jesus' stripes we are healed, Lord God. We are praying for those that have issues with their minds, Lord God. We pray that you would remove those spirits from their minds, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that um, you continue to bless those with financial issues, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, in their area of needs, Lord God. Open doors that no man can close, Lord God. Give them jobs, Lord God. But bless us, Lord God, that we would be great stewards of your money, Lord. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God, for being a loving, kind Father. We thank you, Lord God, for all the provisions you've given us, for protecting us, Lord God, for healing us, for providing for us, Lord God, for being a lawyer, Lord God, and being just when we need justice, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for each and every member of Mount Jezreel, Lord God, and we pray that you will continue to meet every need, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what we do in the community, Lord God, and we pray that you will continue to send the laborers, Lord God, so that we may go out and do what we need to do in the world. We thank you, Lord God, for all of the leaders of Mount Jezreel, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the membership. We thank you, Lord God, for our leader, Pastor Hunter, Lord God. Continue to bless him and his family, Lord, and continue to bless Pastor Emeritus Spearman and his family as well, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, just for your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. Be with those that are bereaved during this time, Lord God. Be with those that are struggling with some other, other type of loss, Lord God. Comfort them, Lord God. Give them peace, Lord God. Overwhelm them with your presence, Lord God. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God, for being just who you are to us, Lord God. For being our Lord, for being our Father, for listening to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this space where we can come and pray, Lord God, to you, knowing that you hear us, Lord God, and that you will respond according to your will and your way, Lord God. So, Lord, for every unspoken prayer request, we pray that the Holy Spirit will intercede and, and hear the innermost cries of our heart, Lord God. Bring those petitions before you, Lord God. We have faith that you will respond according to your will, Lord God. We bless you. We honor you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome. Here are the upcoming events at MJBC. Don't forget to refuel with the pastor every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for WOW service, which is also called Worship on Wednesday. The Mount Jasro Christian School presents Double Good Popcorn online fundraiser March the 7th through the 10th. The fundraiser will help us to raise funds to purchase supplies for the STEAM and art program. For more information, please contact Sister Mina Pearson. The Usher Ministry will host their virtual anniversary fellowship on Saturday, March the 12th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Marlene Turner. Join the Youth Ministry for Paint and Create on March the 18th at 6 p.m. For more information, go to mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. The One Flesh Ministry presents Marriage and Faith Seminar, March the 25th through the 27th. Please see the email blast for the registration link or contact Reverend Arthur and Patricia Williamson. Get ready, Mount Jesuit. It's time to return back to the tabernacle for in-person worship. So mark your calendars for our welcome back experience on April the 3rd, 2022 at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Please pay attention to the email blast 
for all the pertinent information as well as the church website. Stop by the bookstore and pick up our new MJBC logo mask while supplies still last. We would like to send a special birthday shout out to our first lady, Lady P. We celebrate you today as we pray that God continues to show you his grace and favor. Happy birthday, Lady P. Mount Jezreel, throughout the week, we want you to stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel as well as Facebook and Instagram. Have a wonderful week. Hey, Mount Jezreel, it's giving time. I want you to take this time to repeat after me. I give because I love God. I give because I trust God. I give because I'm obedient to the word, the will, and the work of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mount Jezreel, there are five ways in which you can give. They're on the screen before you. You can give by way of online at www.mountjezreel.com. And you can click the giving tab and it will direct you to our online giving. Or you can give by way of bill pay where you give through your financial banking institution. And the gifts will be sent directly to our church. You can go to your mobile device and give by way of Givelify. And that is safe and secure. You can mail your gifts to the church office or you can give by dropping your gifts off at the church office Monday through Friday. Our church address is 420 University Boulevard East, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Come on, let's give at this moment. We are asking God to bless every giver and every gift, every seed and every sower, every tithe and every tither. Less than 100 fold. Let's give unto the Lord at this time.
question is, when you're standing, when you're standing at a cross, what do you do? What do you do? When a fork is in the road, when a fork is in the road, what do you do? What do you do? When the world is on your shoulders, when the world is on your shoulders, what do you do? What do you do? And when your back is up against the wall, when your back's up against the wall, what do you do? What do you do? Huh. The question is, what do you do? What do you do? You just hold on. Hold on. And keep the faith. I know it looks dark, but you got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Yes. Just keep the faith. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Yeah. So where do you look? Where do you look? When there's nowhere else to look. When there's nowhere else to look. Where do you turn? Where do you turn? And when there's nowhere else to turn. When there's nowhere else to turn. Where, where do, you, do go? you go? When there's nowhere else to go. When there's nowhere else to go. What do you do? What do you do? When there's nothing else to do. When there's nothing else to do. You are in the, the master's hand. And the master has a plan. And the master has a plan. So hold on. Hold on. Just hold on. Hold on. And keep the faith. And keep the faith. Hallelujah. It may be hard, but you got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. It may be hard, but you gotta keep the faith. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. And here's why he has worked it out before. He has worked it out before. And he can work it out again. He can work it out again. So trust God. Trust Trust God. Trust God. So victory, victory is mine. Is mine. Say victory, victory is mine. Is mine. Now point to yourself and say victory is yours. Victory ah, is yours. Is yours. Tell the world, victory is yours. Victory is yours. Is yours. Now let's say victory is ours. Victory is ours. Is ours. Say victory is ours. Victory is ours. Is ours. And keep the faith. Keep the faith. To keep the faith. Keep the faith. No matter what it looks like, just keep the faith. Keep the faith. No matter what it looks like, keep the faith. Keep the faith. God is on our side, so keep the keep faith. Keep the faith. He will never leave us. Keep the keep faith. Keep the faith. Just keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Well, tell yourself, keep the faith. Keep the faith. I can make it. Keep the faith, keep the faith. I'm gonna win, keep the faith, keep the faith. God is with us, so keep the faith, keep the faith. Keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith. Keep telling yourself, keep the faith, keep the faith. Hallelujah. Keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. 
We're winners, we're more than conquerors. Through Christ that loves us, keep the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, worship. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being that God. How we bless God for this glorious opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. It is uh, an awesome time in the Lord's day on this first Sunday of March to worship him and to thank him for all that he's done, what he's doing and what he yet has to do. It is my joy as we prepare to go to the word of God. Genesis chapter 17, I want to read this entire uh, narrative to us this morning. As we continue in our series, Living a Life of Faith, Living a Life of Faith, I want to read this entire pericope to you, Genesis chapter 17, commencing at verse 1 and concluding at verse number 27. And while you're turning there and getting your digital apparatus to go to the Word of God, I want to share as we live a life of faith uh, that our faith has led the COVID response team and myself to make a safe decision for us to return back to in-person worship. So I'm super excited to welcome you all back as of April the 3rd, 2022, with both of our worship experiences at 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. And we still will offer the social, social sanctuary at 10 o'clock a.m. as well. So I look forward to seeing you in the tabernacle as we worship God. Now, there are some responsibilities on your end that must be taken seriously. Number one, we need you to continue to watch the email blast as more information will be unfolding as how we will reopen, what's needed when we reopen. Uh, and we want to make sure that you also get the registration links that will open towards the end of this month in preparation for the first Sunday in April. So please, ma'am, please, sir, do not toss those emails away as information will be coming out weekly for you so that you know what's required and what is non-negotiable as we return to our in-person worship. I look forward to seeing you all on April the 3rd as we worship God in the tabernacle in spirit and in truth. Again, I look forward to welcoming you back to the tabernacle on the campus of Mount Jezreel Baptist Church. Let's look to the Lord in prayer and we'll jump right into the word of God. Consecrate me now to my, thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis chapter 17, commencing at verse 1, reads on this wise. When Abram, Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, This is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham. For you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations. And kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you 
and your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You are all you and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must be cut off. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to the members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign-born servants whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. And any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the family covenant for breaking the covenant. Then God said to Abraham regarding Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, her name will be Sarah. And I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How can I become a father at the age of 100? He thought. And how can Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? So Abram said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. But God replied, no. Sarah, your wife, will give birth to a son for you. You will name him Isaac. And I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as an everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also just as you have asked. I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply his descendants. He will become the father of 12 princes. And I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will be confirmed with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah about this time next year. When God had finished speaking, he left Abraham. That very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and every male in his household, including those born there and those he had bought. Then he circumcised them, cutting off their foreskins, just as God had told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he circumcised when he was circumcised and Ishmael, his son, was 13. Both Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on the same day, along with all the other men and boys of the household, whether they were born there or bought as servants, all were circumcised with him. The grass withers, the flowers thereof fades away. The word of our God shall stand. I would like to talk with this demonic thrust in our minds when God breaks the silence. When God breaks the silence. Beloved, when chapter 17 of the book of Genesis opens, God makes an appearance before Abram and reconvenes the conversation with him from the previous 24 years. It's interesting to note that chapter 16 ends with Hagar being told to return to her maiden Sarai where she bears a son. Abraham sires Ishmael at the ripe old age of 86 years old. He's 99 as chapter 17 begins. That suggests, child of God, for 13 plus years, there has been no recorded conversation between God and Abraham, according to the historian Moses. And what an interesting notion to consider that God was silent for over a decade. It makes me wonder if we could handle it if God were to hit the mute button. Could you function as a believer if God was silent for a significant or lengthy period of time? Nonetheless, God shows up and begins the conversation with Abram in chapter 17 and then reiterates the terms and the conditions of the original covenant that he made with Abram in chapter 12. The conversation moves from a review of the earlier dialogue with the first Lord, when first the Lord called Abram 
at age 75 to a renewal of that same covenant, including an additional need for a clearer understanding of the correlated responsibilities that came along with the covenant. Hear me, child of God. All too often, believers want to reap the blessings from God but seem to fail to fulfill our responsibilities to God. Let me say that again. I don't want you to miss it, and I know I have disciples taking notes. All too often, believers want to reap the blessings from God, but we seem to fail to fulfill our responsibilities to God. God, it seems, wants to ensure that Abram fully understands the true covenants are never one-sided. If there is to be a real buy-in into a serious faith covenant with God, then church is going to cost you something. Let's take a look at the story in chapter 17 and see how things unfold when God breaks his silence. Notice, first of all, when God speaks, God affirms his presence. God breaks this apparent 13-year period of silence in verse 1. The Bible tells us God appears unto Abram. That's an indication of his presence. He declares who he is in a way we have never heard before. I am God Almighty. That's what he says. I am El Shaddai. That's his person. This is the first time that that specific name shows up in the entire Bible. It's the Hebrew name for God expressed in the title El Shaddai. And then God tells Abram his preferences for Abram's life as a true follower of his God. God says, I need you to walk before me faithfully and Blameless. Now, don't misinterpret that as God requiring Abram uh, sinless perfection. No, that's not what God expects. He's actually telling Abram that he wants him to always keep and never stop believing no matter what happens and to be careful not to put yourself where the enemy can openly accuse you because of something you have stupidly and publicly done. Child of God, we all have to remain faithful and we must work harder as Christians to be blameless. There ought to be some things, child of God, that we just won't do. There has to be some conversations, child of God, that we just won't join in. There has to be some places that we just won't go. There has to be some things that we just won't say. When we signed up to follow after him, we signed up to live a faithful and blameless life unto God. And in the opening two verses, God lays the foundation for the remind, remainder of the chapter. And what really gets me is the next verse. The Bible says that this patriarch Abram fell down and worshipped. Don't miss that. Abram, in the very presence of of the holy, all-powerful, almighty God instinctively falls down and begins to worship God. Did you get that picture? God shows up and Abram falls down. And begins to worship this all-powerful, majestic, holy, almighty God. There's no indication that a choir was singing. He was not at church. In fact, he's at his home. 
No music was playing. No praise team was harmonizing. But yet, without any of that natural or electric accompaniment, Abram simply and seriously fell down before God and worshipped. One of these days, I pray, saints, we'll get it, that it doesn't take all of that extra stuff. And yes, it is nice to have, but it doesn't take all of that to sincerely and seriously pause and bow down and worship God. Because when you recognize the presence of God, you don't have time to cue some music. You don't have time for somebody to sing you happy. You don't have time for a preacher to push you into some acrobatic calisthenics. You don't have time for them to pump you, push you, prime you, or poke on you, or even pull you. Sometimes when God's presence shows up, all you can do is fall down in glory, in honor, in majesty, and in worship to the God of your salvation. God breaks this silence, and he breaks this silence by showing up. He breaks this silence by affirming his presence. Yes, he affirms his presence. However, he also articulates his plan. That starts in verse 9. I'm not making it up. Then God said to Abram, Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you, you and me. From generation to generation, every male must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to the members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign born servants whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. You look at verses 15 and 16. In short, God tells Abraham what he's going to do for him. But he doesn't finish until he tells Abraham what he expects from him. Let, 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 me, let me share that with you again. God tells Abraham what he's going to do for him. Divine sovereignty. But he doesn't finish until he tells Abraham what he expects from him. Human responsibility. You see, covenants are like coins. There are two sides to them. And without both, you don't have the whole. This isn't the first covenant that God makes with Abraham. Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, Abram, Abraham, was told to get a three-year-old heifer, female goat, and a ram, as well as a turtle dove and young pigeons. Cut the heifer, goat, and ram in half, lay the halves on each other. Abraham's first covenant is going to cost him property. This second covenant, Genesis chapter 17, is going to cost him personally. The first covenant, three-year-old ram, heifer, goat, turtle dove, young pigeon, cut them, lay the halves on each other. That's property. This, this, this covenant, you and your descendants will have this continual responsibility that each male must be circumcised. Foreskin must be removed. This, this is the covenant that's going to cost you personally. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be a sign of the covenant that you made with me and the covenant I'm making with you. James Montgomery Boyce writes, the covenants of God have two features. First, they are unilateral, that is, one-sided. 
This means that the covenant comes from God and God alone. Not from God and man getting together to decide what conditions of their future relationships are going to be. No, God does not need your permission to do what God wants to do in your life. It's unilateral, one-sided. We do not bargain with God in the same way we might bargain over material possessions. What God says he wants from you, God will get it out of you. But secondly, covenants are eternal. This is God does not change. And since the terms of the covenant come from God, they are maintained by God. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lamentations teach it that God changes not. In other words, when God makes a promise, he is a promise keeper. So if God's, the covenant comes from God, and God doesn't change, God maintains, then that means the covenant does not change. When God makes you a promise, guess what? The promise is going to come to pass. Here's my question, child of God. What will you give up in order to receive from God? What is it that you have property or personally that God needs in order to bless you. What is God asking you to let go of and to get rid of so that he can give you a better blessing? To open the door of your overflow is going to require the need of your obedience. Say that again, pastor. To open the door of your overflow is going to need the key of your be say, say it one more time three times three times is a charm to open the door of your overflow is going to need the key of your obedience you're going to have do what God requires in order to get what he has for you you're going to have to do what God requires in order to get what he has for you. If you want it from God, you're going to have to do what he says. If you want windows to open up and blessings to be poured out, you're going to have to bring the tithe to the storehouse. If you want God to supply every one of your needs according in to his riches in glory, you're going to have to do the prerequisites to the promise and that's be a blessing to the minister and the ministry. If you want God to take care of you and open doors for you and provide for you and watch out for you, you have to follow what he says for you to do. I bid you good afternoon. May the Lord bless you real good. But lastly, when God breaks the silence, yes, he affirms his presence. Absolutely, he articulates his plan. But lastly, God assures his promise. I, I'm not making it up. Abraham was blown away up to this point, and Then he couldn't take it anymore. God so amazed him that he, Abraham, fell face down again. But this time, not in worship but he's laughing almost in tears. Can you imagine this 99-year-old man falling on the ground laughing at what God has just said to him? Well, it's in the Bible, and it's recorded in verse number 17. It's in verse number 17. It says, Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I become a father at the age of 100? He thought, and how can Sarah have a baby when she's 99, 90 years old. So Abram said to God, may Israel live under your special blessing. Hold up. 
Listen to God's revelation while Abraham is laughing and still trying to figure God out. God resolves Abraham's query and reassures him that Sarah is the one who's going to bear the son of promise even in her old age. Verse 23 through Verses 27, we watch a 99-year-old man of faith after having heard clearly the voice of God reverently and obediently follow divine orders and undergoing and during the painful rite of passage called circumcision. The thought of that experience makes every man alive and every man listening to me right now cringe. And it was only, not only Abraham, who underwent this painful surgical procedure without any medical assistance, but it was also his son Ishmael. And every male who was a part of his household, every man in his entire operation, every male servant and every male employee on his staff. Wow. I can only imagine how that scene must have looked as Abraham circumcised his whole household. One may be wondering, does God really require all of that? Faith says yes. Yes, he does. And here is why. Because God wants us to arrive at a point in our faith journeys with him where we are willing to make extreme particular sacrifice and endure excruciating personal suffering so that God can know that we believe in him and that we still love him. And that means we are willing to do it even when our journeys with him seem like he's been silent. Hear me, beloved, God's silence doesn't mean he is still. And his absence doesn't mean he isn't active. And his traceability doesn't mean we don't trust him. I, I'll say it again. God's silence doesn't mean he's still. His absence doesn't mean he isn't active. And his traceability doesn't mean we don't trust him. How can you say that, pastor? I can say it because I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roar. I've felt sin breakers dash, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to still fight on. For he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No. Never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me. He promised never to leave me alone. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. There may be someone listening and want to offer this invitation based upon a promise that God has made for you. The promise that God made is, that, is the same promise he made with Abraham that he's going to bless you. And he's going to bless you, not always through material possession, but there's an even greater blessing, and it's through salvation. John writes of, of God saying, For God so loved the world that he gave, that's a promise, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, here's the promise, should not perish but have everlasting life. And as we are gathered in the social sanctuary, I want you to do me a favor. I want you, man, woman, boy, or girl, to pray this prayer with me. Let's pray this, get this prayer together. Repeat after me. God, I confess my sins. I recognize I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I know you sent your son to die for me and you raised him that I may have eternal life. Thank you, kind Father. Now come into my heart. Take control of my life. Guide and guard me by ordering my steps and my stops by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, that's the sinner's prayer. I want you to know salvation has come now to your, nigh to your home. God has showed up 
He's received your prayer because you stepped out on faith to repeat a prayer of God's forgiveness and him coming into your life. So do me a favor. If you're watching by way of, social, of the social sanctuary, Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, I want you to type right in the chat, I want to be saved or I want to join the body of Christ. I want to join the Lord's church. Type that in. Our administrators are watching. They're going to connect with you. You can also, you can also go to our church's website, mountjezreel.com, and click the Join Us tab. Fill that out. And in 48 hours, we'll get in touch with you. Lastly, you can contact one of the men and women whose names are listed. That's our diaconate ministry. And they are the men and women who help this pastor serve this congregation through pastoral care by the extension of this office. They're waiting to talk to you, to tell you the next steps, to get information from you so that we can connect you in the life of this church and start you on your faith journey. You just took the first step of faith to admit you're a sinner and that you need God's amazing grace and how we are excited and celebrating God for you making that decision. Man, woman, boy, or girl, make that decision today. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do right now. I promise you, then you will know that God breaks his silence. God bless you. God keep you as we continue to pray for you. At this moment, our associate minister will come and share with you as we prepare for the communion moment. They're going to share with you the reasons behind communion and what communion means for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ and are baptized believers in him. So if you will please, ma'am, please, sir, grab the elements, bread, water, crackers, juice, Whatever you have, even if it's a chip and a soda, you just need a little bit. Just grab it and let's come back to worship. Hear from our associate ministers as we meet at the table. The Lord's Supper, also called communion, is the second ordinance that Baptists believe Christ established and is therefore to be observed by churches until the end of time and that communion is a memorial meal. The Lord's Supper is intended to remind the church of the foundation upon which it rests. For in this ordinance we see depicted the mighty acts of God in Christ. As a visible symbol of the gospel preached in words, they remind Christians of the incarnation of which the high points were death, burial, resurrection, and exaltation. These events signify God's deliverance of humanity from the bondage of sin, and they recall to the church that Christ is the reason for their existence. The bread and wine are but symbols of the broken body and spilled blood of Jesus. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance as, of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Baptists believe Jesus established the meal as a symbolic reminder of his role in salvation and as a communal event by which first his disciples and later believers would be bound with him forever. Baptists believe the elements are symbolically representative now as they were on the night of the original supper of Christ's body and blood.
The body and blood are shared by believers to commemorate his sufferings and death and to show their continued faith. Participation in sacrifice and hope in Christ's continued life and presence. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread after giving thanks and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And they ate together. Likewise, he took the cup. This is the cup of the covenant. For as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And they drank together. For as often as you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Following that gathering, that communion experience with Jesus and his disciples, he commissioned and compelled them out into the hedges and the highways to compel men and women that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Man Jezreel, disciples of this congregation, I commission and compel you just as Jesus did to go out and share your faith story with someone else, that they may come to the saving knowledge of who Christ is and experience life and life more abundantly. It is our duty to make disciples. So I ask that you be disciple makers and share it with those in your home, in your community, in your city, and even across the country. We are now virtually, and you are now connected. So you're commissioned to share Christ. How we thank God for this worship experience and as always as pastor I am so grateful for every ministry that pours their heart into what they do each week. And I want to take this moment to thank God for every ministry and every lay pastor that serves in some type of capacity whether on screen or behind the screen as we make sure that we present worship to you in an excellent way, but more so importantly, in a way that is pleasing to God, that is a sweet smelling savor to his nostrils. So we celebrate God for every ministry that plays a part in making sure that Mount Jezreel is in an area to be Mount Jezreel worldwide. God bless you, God keep you is my prayer. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for what we've seen and what we've heard, what we've felt, what we've experienced. We pray, God, that as we have entered this worship environment to worship you, we exit to witness. So when we leave our homes, whether we are in the store, in the marketplace, or even on our jobs, we share you with others. God, yet continue to keep us from danger seen and unseen. Protect us and provide for us. Give us peace, provisions, and providence by way of your promises. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. The people of God who love the Lord Jesus Christ said amen. God bless you, Mount Jezreel. Know that I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it.